Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Westchester County International Day of the Girl virtual event. We dedicate this event to Dr. Corinne Whitaker, an international giant and fierce advocate for girls and women. She stood for gender equity and intergenerational organizing so that girls, young women, and those who identify as female had the physical, psychological, social, emotional, economic supports for their development and their bright futures. We miss you dearly, Corinne, but we hope that you are smiling down upon us and are very proud of the product for today. Now I'd like to turn this over to our wonderful MC, Mrs. Sayadana, who is brilliant and is also a member of Sister to Sister International. Enjoy. Good evening. My name is Sayadana Brandon Douglas. I'm a recent graduate of Stony Brook University, and I currently work in video production and directing through my business, SBD Digital Media. I'm so excited to be here with all of you tonight for Westchester County's International Day of the Girl event. This year's theme is our voices, our rights, our movements, which reminds us of how important it is to advocate for what we believe in and the importance of promoting youth voice and empowerment. We are the next generation and are actively looking for ways to improve the world around us. So this evening, we have an action-packed program for you. We will hear from prominent leaders and role models, as well as hear from some of you, our high school students right here in Westchester County. Then you will be able to participate in interactive workshops where you will get to learn more about how you can use your voice on important topics like social justice so that we can create a better, more just future for us and our peers. Most importantly, we hope you have fun. So let's get started. I'm pleased to kick off the event with a warm welcome from the Executive Director of the Westchester County Youth Bureau, Dr. Damia Harris Madden. Hi, I am Dr. Damia Harris Madden of the Westchester County Youth Bureau, a division of the Westchester County Executive's Office. And I am thrilled to present our third year celebration of the International Day of the Girl. This was inspired by the United Nations, and we have taken the charge to ensure that our young women are highlighted and uplifted. It is our voices, our rights, our movements that are going to make huge impacts in the world. And so today we celebrate the audacious, the bold, the brilliant young women and those who identify as female because you have the power to enact change. I would also like to introduce our wonderful champion, Mr. George Latimer, the County Executive. Hi, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and today we celebrate you. This year's theme for International Day of the Girl is social justice. We want all of you to know that you can make a difference. You inspire change in your communities. Follow your voice and be heard and be empowered to get involved in your communities and leave your footprint, much like fierce advocate, Corrine Whitaker. We honor her today for her commitment and her support of helping young girls rise beyond to their fullest potential. Take what you learn each and every day and use that knowledge, that power to find your passion and be a leader of the future. Continue to celebrate who you are every single day. Thank you so much to County Executive Latimer for those wonderful remarks. We truly appreciate you always being a champion for young people in Westchester. And now let's hear from other elected officials followed by some messages from some of you. Hi everyone, I'm Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and I'm delighted to join all of you for your third annual celebration of the International Day of the Girl. The theme of this year's conference, our voices, our rights, our movements, should serve as a reminder to all of us that there are so many young women in our communities and around the world who are already on the front lines in the battle for our rights and at the forefront of movements demanding a safer, 
greener and more just world. And I hope it inspires even more young women to join their ranks. If you are passionate about something, you don't have to wait to act. Your voices and your experiences matter. I know that when young women like you get involved and when we listen to you and lift you up, we can and will build a better future together. Hello everyone. I am Tish James, the Attorney General of the great state of New York. And it is my honor and my privilege to join you for the third annual Westchester County International Day of the Girl. Our message this year is our voices, our rights, and our movements. And that's a message we need right now. We definitely had big accomplishments over the years, but as long as you don't see as many girls and women in industry as you see boys and men, we still have work to do. The fight for change, my friends, is never easy, but I have faith because we have a not so secret weapon. We have girl power. And it's young women across the country and the world who are leading us to protect our planet and our communities. You see, you don't have to be powerful or a politician to make change. All you need is your voice. And we need every single girl out there to use her voice. We need you advocating. And when you're old enough, voting. So keep fighting back against the injustices that you see and that you face. You are warriors. You are my greatest inspiration. You make me proud. And I am proud to stand with you. Hi, I'm Andrea Stewart Cousins, the Majority Leader of the New York State Senate. I'm delighted to be here with the Westchester County Youth Bureau in celebration of the International Day of the Girl. Today is an opportunity for us to recognize and amplify the voices of adolescent girls worldwide. And this year's theme, our voices, our rights, our movements, is particularly pertinent. As the first woman to ever lead a legislative body in New York's 244 year history, there was a time not too long ago that women and girls did not have a seat at the table or a voice in the room where decisions were made. And now in 2021, we have our state's first woman governor and our country's first woman vice president. While so much has changed since our nation's founding, the journey to true justice and equality is far from over. It's up to you to stay engaged, stay vigilant, and fight for a more just future for the generation of girls yet to come. Never forget the power your voice carries and never give up in the face of adversity. I cannot wait to see what the future holds for all of you. Hi, I'm New York State Senator Shelley Mayer, and I'm so pleased to join the Westchester County Youth Bureau in celebrating the International Day of the Girl. Although you may still be too young to vote, you possess an extremely valuable tool, your voice. And when we work together, we can use your voice, that tool in a powerful way. We can amplify our message, your message, and create real change in our communities, change that you believe is necessary. So whether you care about the environment, racial justice, criminal justice, safety, health, or your education, I encourage you to speak up and reach out to your local leaders. We look forward to hearing from you. Together, we will celebrate a great Day of the Girl. Hello, I'm Assemblymember Amy Paulin, and I am thrilled to be able to celebrate Westchester's young women as part of the third annual Westchester County International Day of the Girl. My advice to all young women is to trust in yourselves. We are all capable of so much more than we give ourselves credit for. When put to the test, we rise to the occasion. Our femininity is a strength. We have to stick together, support one another, and make a difference together. We need more women at the table in every level of our society. And even that is not enough. When you get to the table, we need to hear your voices. So please show up, speak out, and bring everything you have to whatever you choose to do. We can change the world. I'm Sandy Yale of New York State Assemblywoman. As girls and women, we have voices. Make them strong, make them thoughtful, make them caring, 
and make your voice change your community, New York State, and the country and make them all better. Together, our voices really do count. So make them be heard. I'm Mimi Roca, the Westchester County District Attorney. It takes strength and bravery to speak up and defend our rights as women against powerful forces trying to take them away and silence us. I am so inspired by girls and young women across the county, state, nation, and globe who are leading and joining this movement. We deserve better. So be strong and brave. Be tenacious and resilient. Speak up and be heard. Your voice is unique and important. And together, our voices are a powerful movement for equality and justice for all women. Our voices, our rights, our movements. It is important for girls to use their voices because we are the present and we are the future. In the words of RBG, women belong in all places where decisions are being made. Power. I'm continually inspired by women all across the world and their effortless ability to create meaningful change. This celebration demonstrates that girls, women, and people of color have tremendous courage and deserve to have their voices be heard. Our voices have done so much to get us to where we are now, and we must still continue to use our voices to fight today. We have used our voices to not only fight for the right to vote, we have also used our voices to fight for equality in education as well as equal pay. We have even had to raise our voices to play and compete in sports. In the words of Pakistani activist Malala Yousafzai, I believe in the power of the voice of women. It doesn't matter how you look, it doesn't matter how you dress, it, what matters is what's on the inside, not the outside. We as women and girls are capable of using our voices to inspire change and fight for our rights. Empowering each other helps us find the power within ourselves and become our own leaders. Your voice is only as loud as you make it, so speak up and be proud. Women empowerment to me means that women are not afraid to stand by their choices or um, stand by their actions that they make. They are able to come together and share their ideas, express their ideas to fight injustice and equality. If you want to see change, you be the change that you want to see. Celebrating all women is celebrating every woman of any race, sexuality, religion, etc. If you say I won like a girl, I'm going to take that as a compliment and run as fast as I can. There are a lot of things in this world that can distract you, but it is up to you to maintain your focus. Stay strong, stay focused. Happy International Day of the Girl. Wow, thank you to our elected officials for your words. And thank you to our students. Your messages were really moving. It's clear that the next generation is ready to make a difference. So now let's keep that momentum going with our first workshop from Family Services of Westchester's Youth Council staff. Hello, everyone. I don't know if I could follow all of that, uh, but... Um... I will try. My name is Marissa Raganisi, and uh, I'm here with... Hi, I'm Chloe. We're from the Westchester County Youth Council's uh, Family Services of Westchester, and we want to help you raise your voices to make the world a little bit or a lot bit better. So uh, welcome to our crash course in speaking up. Um, so there are many ways we can create positive changes in our communities, and there are a lot of reasons to do that. Social justice, as, as I'm sure you all know, it takes lots of forms. We'd like to know what direction you want to take the next 13, 14 minutes in, so we're going to figure that out using a poll. So we would like for you to vote for the topic that you would like to, uh, uh, you know, spend some time thinking about. We've got the arts, petitions, peer education, protests, and volunteerism. So what do you wanna talk about? We'll just give it a minute for everyone to vote. It's fun watching everything come in. No matter what, we're gonna have a good time. So don't you worry. All right, it looks like right now we've got arts and peer education neck and neck, which is gonna win? 
if I need to break the tie, I'm going to do it. <laughs> we have 50. Let's see. We have, I think we have a few seconds left to vote. Everyone is almost in. I have a feeling that we're gonna that we're gonna be talking about the arts. Well, while I'm waiting for uh, the last votes to to come in, let me just say that um, the Westchester County Youth Councils is a great resource for all of all of you girls in the county um, because you could come and you could bring your interest in a certain issue, or you can uh, come because you want to learn about different issues. You could come because you already have a project that you want to work on. You could come to see what projects are going on and we will work with you to help you make a change in your community. So we will make sure that you have our information. And I think that we are, I'm not sure that we're gonna get, oh, we have 100% answered. Okay, and we have peer education is the winner. All right, so let's talk about it. Just give me one second. Um, so just scroll through. Yes, sorry about that. That's okay. Just give us just give us one second so that we could uh, remember. This is a choose your own adventure yeah. workshop. So just give us a moment so we could get to your adventure here today. So nope, that's not the adventure. That's not the adventure. Share with us. This is the adventure. Here we go. All right, so peer education, let's watch a short video about using peer education to raise your voice. Some people call me the girl who was shot by the Taliban, and some the girl who fought for her rights. The terrorists tried to stop us, and it takes me and my friends who are here today on our school bus in 2012. I had two options. One was to remain silent and wait to be killed. And the second was to speak up and then be killed. I chose the second one. I decided to speak up. Neither their ideas nor their bullets could win. We survived. And since that day, our voices have grown louder and louder. I tell my story, not because it is unique, but because it is not. I'm not a lone voice. I am many. I am Malala, but I'm also Shazia. I'm Kainat. I'm Kainat Somro. I'm Mozun. I am Amina. I am those 66 million girls who are deprived of education. It has become the first generation that decides to be the last that sees empty classrooms, lost childhoods, and wasted potentials. Some will say this is impractical, or too expensive, or too hard, or maybe even impossible. But it is time the world thinks bigger. Some people call me the girl. I think that's a really powerful video that shows how effective it can be to educate your peers. And remember that Malala uh, not only spoke to, uh, you know, has spoken to the whole world um, about the value of education, but she has worked for years talking to other young women about the value of education. Um, so uh, what is peer education? 
Well, it's a lot of things. It can be really formal, like through a program at your school that maybe trains you in conflict resolution and hooks you up to opportunities to use it at school and maybe in your community. It can be through an organization that teaches you how to educate other kids about consent or about STDs and STIs. It could also be informal and people downplay the importance of this, but you can educate yourself and you could be a great source of information for your friends in everyday conversations in your you know, family. Those are just a few types of peer education. So I'm wondering if anyone has used peer education to address an issue that you care about. Remember again, that it doesn't need to be like you were a peer mentor through, uh, through a program. It could be that you've used informal, you know, you've used an informal channel. So tell us what you've done uh, in the chat. Please use the chat. Have you seen something? If you haven't been a part of something yourself, do you know about any peer education programs? Tell us in the chat and Chloe's gonna read some things out. And if you don't write anything, we have nothing to read out. So please write yeah. something. <laughs> Do we have anything yet, Chloe? No, we don't have anything. Um, but I wanted to say um, peer education might feel kind of um, like a big task, but like Marissa said, Think about informal opportunities where you were talking to your friends about advocacy and social justice issues that you believe in. And think about the times too when you got into disagreements and you didn't actually think the same thing as your friend and you took the time to teach your friend your perspective and um, let them know, you know, what was going on in your life that made you come to that decision. And that's a very informal way of using peer education. I see here, I used peer education to successfully convey drug prevention and violence pre prevention message in schools. Yes, that's a really good example. That's a great example. So let's talk, I'm just gonna ask us to put aside the specific topic of peer education for a second, because I wanna, I wanna talk about how we can, how we're able to um, use uh, the SMART goals in order to work on, on any issue that we have and using any medium. So I'm gonna assume for a second that that you have a partner or a team to work with in this scenario. But if not, you know, you don't need to worry because the uh, if you're interested in doing anything, the Westchester Youth Bureau and lots of other organizations have so many programs for girls who wanna make positive changes in their communities. And there's more information on those groups to follow. And again, you could always come to the youth councils with an idea, you'll find a group of teens who wanna help. So let's just assume you're interested in peer education, you wanna do a project that you, know, that you wanna work on. Turn to the SMART chart. Turn to the SMART chart, it is going to help you so much. Each letter stands for an important piece of your project. So the S is for specific. You need to very clearly define what you want to do. The M stands for measurable, so how will you know you've reached your goal? Like, is it a number of kids who you talk to? Is it the, um, is it the media outlets that you put an educational piece where you wanna talk to your peers about something? Uh, just something that you could actually measure. The A is for achievable. This really matters a lot because many of us, we wanna make big changes. We wanna change the whole world and that's awesome, but we have to make sure that when we're talking about a project, we have a goal that we could meet. And so that, and then next we have R for realistic and realistic feels a lot like achievable to me a lot of the time. So I wanna talk about a different R and that is relevant. Your project is going to be most powerful if it's really relevant to the people you're trying to reach, if it's really relevant to you. So for instance, addressing sexual harassment, teaching kids about sexual harassment, that is awesome. But at the youth councils, we always ask, how do we wanna, you know, how do we address sexual harassment that girls in Westchester are experiencing? 
Meaning what form does it take? Is it dress coding that's happening a lot? Is that the form of sexual harassment that you're seeing? If when you keep your project really relevant, to the big issue you're dealing with, if you keep it specific, you know, uh, in your community, in your world to the big issue you're dealing with by making sure that you, uh, you know, address that specific man manifestation, the more relevant, the better. And then there's the T for timely. You really need to give yourself a deadline. It's going to make sure that planning doesn't drag on forever. It'll keep you from getting stuck too long on one project. It's just going to help you out. So now that's enough of me sort of going on and on about the SMART goals in general. But we're still going to stick with the SMART goals because I want us to think about what it looks like to use SMART goals to turn a specific idea into a peer education project. So give us an idea for a peer education project using the chat. And again, don't be shy and there's no, there's no bad ideas. Throw things out. For instance, to educate kids about consent. Um, you know, we could talk about, again, STDs and STIs are a very popular, you know, topic for a peer education. What do we have in the chat? Anything? Oh, yes. Yeah. So actually, as you were speaking, I saw a couple of already um, successful peer education movements that a couple of you have been involved with. Before I get to that, I just also wanted to mention for the T, um, when exactly do you want to accomplish it? Make sure you have a timeline, right? And make sure that that timeline isn't, isn't set in stone, that it can change. If you experience, you know, roadblocks along the way, your timeline is fluent and it, and it just, it should match what I, the realistic, the R, what is actually on the ground happening. So for, for our ideas in the chat, I have, Older siblings can also um, educate their younger siblings and have power to influence. The youth court members use peer education to succeed at what they love to do. They are amazing, intelligent, and passionate and work with each other to create an amazing peer environment that they can all thrive from. Um, Athena, I am an author who is 13 years old and universal writer. I use my books to educate, heal, and inspire others regardless of age, gender, or economic status. Um, anyone who has skill or gift can use it to empower their lives. So if as the presentation goes on and you feel like you have some ideas about peer education, you can Drop them in the chat. It could be about bullying, um, anti-bullying, anti-racism, anything. Let's just say for now that so that we could work through the, the SMART goals, let's just say that our peer education project, since we don't have another idea in the chat yet, is to rename your school after an important woman from history. We know a lot of our schools are named after, um, you know, our the founding fathers. Um, so a lot of women are missing from that. Let's say, um, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, people. That was a that was a slide from um, from if we were going to do petitions, but we're not petitioning. We're using peer education. So, say our peer education project is to talk about the importance of our um, of our schools being. Let, let's say that that uh, you want to educate people about the importance of the names that we uh, that we use on our institutions, the statues we put up in our parks to honor people. Okay, so let's say let's say it's about that. How do we make that smart? How do we address the S? How do we make it really specific? Let's even say that we want to talk about the importance of statues honoring our American values. Okay, so let's let's go with that one that we want that you know we want to teach kids about why that matters so how do we make it smart how do we how do we address the s specific how do we make that really specific not all at once in the chat people jane adams yep jane adams so like we we want to talk about jane jane adams so we want to we want a statue of jane adams all right so what could we do in order to make it, we could have a name. We could have a name. We could have a specific uh, person who we think should be honored, who we don't see honored in our, in our communities. 
Okay. Um, Maya Angelou, another, you know, another great woman. So we could make it really specific. We could say we could choose to, uh, to make sure that when we're talking about the importance of honoring women, that we know what specific women that we're talking about. We want to, we want to be able to tell people about these specific women and why they should be honored. That's awesome. All right. So how do we um, then let's move to the M. How do we address the M? How do we make it measurable? What could we do to make this, this peer education project about the importance of our institutions having names that reflect the diversity of the American, you know, of our values and the diversity of our American heritage? How do we make that measurable? And with something like peer education, I feel like that's a pretty, you know, that's that's something that is pretty easy to quantify or to measure with numbers, um, because we could talk about um, how many classrooms. So you want to get into classrooms. How many classrooms you can get into? How many history classrooms in your high school? You could go and you could speak with. You could say it's how many students that I that I talk to. We could say it's give me one more idea in the chat. One more way that we could make that measurable. And I, I have an idea if nobody has an idea. Okay, here we go. You can create an essay platform that would allow students to express their voices. Yeah, and you could even say if we're thinking about measurable, we could say how many places are we publishing pieces? How many places, you know, how many forums are we are we sharing this this peer education lesson that we have? That is a great idea. Um, so, um, okay, what about the A? What about achievable? How do we make our how do we make our project achievable? How do we make sure? I'll give you I'll give you a hint. Do we think that we're going to maybe if we're working uh, with a peer education group that we're deciding we want to put together through the Westchester County Youth Councils or Girls Inc. You know, do we say, OK, our goal is to make sure that the White House knows about, you know, about the work that we're doing and spotlights us for International Youth Week? No, that is not very, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't dream and strive, but when you want to make changes in your community, you make sure that you are articulating an achievable goal. Chloe, what is that in the chat? So it says, determine what you have available and decide what else you need to achieve your goal. Absolutely. And now for the R, for relevant. How do we make sure that it is relevant? How do we keep it very specific to what's going on? in your community, in your lives. What do you think? I think someone actually like answered this before as, um, as, an, as an idea for a survey, right? Like that, that would, um, if you uh, conduct a survey, you, you would be able to see if your goal is actually realistic or not, or relevant. Yeah. You could do a survey to see if it's relevant, if people care about it. And you could also do a survey to make sure that you are, you know, you can you can keep it relevant using surv surveys by making sure that you are, um, no, I'm sorry, Let, another idea for relevant. That's that's great. It's, it's yeah, good to find out. Oh, okay. Let me read them out. We can continue to talk about it and bring it up in discussions relevant to the topic. Make sure that organizations like GEMS that support girls are aware of these ideas, attend, attend town halls and present at any opportunity you have. You can approach each legislative governing body in each county to inform of what you are trying to accomplish in your schools. Okay, that is actually, those are awesome ideas and they tie in to, and remember the T timely, have an endpoint, have a timeline, know what you're doing. But that makes me think a lot of what Chloe just read out in the chat is really about execution. It's really about executing your project because you could have the most amazing idea, but if we can't or don't execute it, 
Well, it's just, it's sad because it doesn't really go anywhere. And we have some strategies um, to keep in mind that sometimes overlap with the SMART goals and sometimes they don't. And you were just, uh, you know, people were just saying some of that stuff in the chat. It's about the outreach. It's about, I'm going to let Chloe talk about that. <laughs> yes. Please put the uh, ideas in the chat about like, how do we execute our projects really well? How do we do that? Right, so we're already kind of brainstorming. You guys are really smart. You're ahead of the game, right? So how do we actually execute our project? So obviously first, we just spent a couple of minutes speaking about the SMART goals, addressing the SMART goals. There are a lot of online resources about addressing SMART goals that provide you with questions that, that make it really simple to address each letter of the goal, of the SMART goals. Um, so once you've developed that, how do you execute it? So the first thing is to communicate a clear message. What is your mission statement? What can you pitch to these decision makers so that when you're ready to be visible to decision makers, you have a clear and concise idea of what your project is. Um, once you speak to those decision makers, you get them on board, um, then you harness the influence of an advocacy network. So those advocacy networks, that's those are the groups that we're mentioning in the chat, right? The Youth Bureau, GEMS, WCYC, Girls Inc., um, different organizations in the area that support what you're doing, and also different decision makers in government and in schools, your principals, administrators. If you're doing something like trying to get your school or county to go carbon neutral, who are you gonna ask? You're gonna ask your principal, your superintendent, right? And you're gonna um, go to maybe like a WCYC meeting where we're talking about exactly that and we could connect you to different organizations that are involved with the United Nations, right? To get to that point. Now, outreach, right? Outreach is kind of, connected to social media now before outreach and still is was more physical more on the ground right like po putting up flyers in your library in your school trying to get more people involved with what you're doing creating a petition right but now where we see the most outreach is social media and the fun thing about you know being young is your access to social media creating an instagram page about like making um, statues of these women instead of men, right? Um, and also TikToks. TikToks are a cool and funky place to put your ideas and get a lot of traction, especially because they're videos and they tend to be goofy, right? So social media is kind of where the outreach lives right now. And it's also where you could do a ton, sorry to interrupt you, Chloe, oh, but it's also where you could do a lot of peer education. Don't forget, be really creative. And remember that people, powerful decision makers can put you in front of more people you wanna talk to. So, uh, you know, I we are, we're sort of out of time, but I just want to, uh, um, I just want to, uh, you know, remind you that um, you've got a lot of resources here that you can be connected with so that you could do peer education projects or any other project that you want to do. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll be, we will see you. And next up, we have Sage, an all-women ensemble that's going to bring you a performance. Yes, thank you everybody. And I see you're still writing in the chat. So I will definitely take note. And if you want to join the WCYC, please reach out to me or Marissa. And here is Sage.
amazing workshop from the Family Services of Westchester's Youth Council staff. And let's give it up for that performance. Sage, you all are so talented. So now I'm looking forward to the next workshop from Girls Inc. Take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Diamond Mollings. I am the Director of Programs here at Girls Inc. of Westchester County. So happy to be here with you guys all tonight. Um, amazing performance. That was one of my favorite songs, so that was great. So tonight we will be talking about uh, building muscle for combating racism. Um, we are running a little short for time, so we may not be able to get to all of it, but we'll get to as much as we possibly can, right? So building muscle for combating racism. Um, where do we start? We always start with building a level of understanding. We need to educate ourselves on how racism works, and then we will go into some action, right? Engaging in the actual combating of racism. And so let's start with that education. Um, we all know what racism is, but did we know that there were four levels to racism? So the first one is internalized racism. The second level is interpersonal racism. The third is institutional racism. And the last is structural racism. Um, and to quickly review each, internalized racism, this uh, can be seen in forms of um, our personal ideas and, and our private beliefs. Um, this can manifest into supremacy. And you know, the, the one that we are most aware of is white supremacy. And that is a personal belief that you are better or superior to another race uh, due to your race, right? Internal, internalized racism can also manifest as internalized oppression. And so this is where the opposite of supremacy or uh, feeling superior, you now feel inferior. Um, so I do not feel uh, worthy or I feel inferior or less than to another race due to my race. So those are some ways that interpersonal, I'm sorry, internalized racism can um, display itself. The next levels interpersonal racism. And so um, now we are adding some expression to those private and personal beliefs that we have. Um, and so this can be, you know, seen in forms of bullying, in forms of teasing. Now it, it's growing from, I not only think that I'm better or superior, but now I'm acting on it, right? Um, and so that's what internal, interpersonal racism can look like. Um, the following level is institutional racism. Uh, the image that you see at the side, this is an image of redlining. And so when we think about institutional racism, I want you to um, think about individualized organizations or companies or um, institutions displaying racial biases. And so um, imagine a, a family of color going to a real estate agency and they are, you know, home shopping, they're looking for homes. And this agency is choosing to only show this family uh, certain homes that are belonging to um, economically disadvantaged neighborhoods, right? So there, and, and this family may be able to afford better homes and better and in better neighborhoods, but uh, this institution is choosing to only show them a certain select selection of homes based on their race. And so this is a, you know, this is a, an example of institutional racism. This is an institution operating um, with uh, racial biases. So now the next level, structural racism. So now this is more than just individualized institutions or organizations, this is now on a societal scope. So this is uh, different races experiencing um, societal disadvantages, right? So in the picture that you see at the side, um, due to societal structures and societal limits, uh, uh, certain families or certain races have limits as to how much money they can obtain, um, the level of education that they will receive um, simply due to society. So it's bigger than um, institutions and separate organizations. Structural racism is a uh, societal view of racial biases. Um, I want to dive a little bit deeper into structural racism and apply it to some relevant, you know, real life things that are going on. And we are all, you know, in the midst of this pandemic with COVID-19 and structural racism is playing a part in it. And so um, 
we wanted to, we, we took some numbers from uh, Long Island, New York, and in Long Island, the black demo, uh, population only makes up less than 11%. So it's a very, very small population in Long, Island, in Long Island. However, although that they are a small population, for every one white person who dies from coronavirus, three black people die. And that's a little confusing, confusing because you would think that, um, you know, because that population is so small that they wouldn't receive the most impacts from coronavirus, but structural racism, um, counters that idea. Um, and this, this slide here kind of explains how that happens. And so to my previous point about um, the housing discrimination that certain families place, these families are, are, are placed in certain areas. And in those areas, they lack resources. They lack access to educational resources, economical resources, but we'll focus on the educational resources. They lack, just because you live in this certain area, um, the schools in this area are not receiving um, high quality educational resources. And, and because you are forced to live in this area, um, a certain group is, experiencing that lack uh, of access to that high quality um, educational resources, right? And so that same group now, due to the lack of access to educational resources are now um, only positioning themselves to receive frontline um, positions, right? And so our frontline workers, obviously they are, uh, in, they are exposed to people, they work with people um, on a general basis and therefore they are exposed to COVID-19 much more than our uh, non frontline workers. And so forced into a certain neighborhood, received lack of education. Now that funnels into the job that I that I have. And now I am um, exposed to COVID-19 at a higher rate. Uh, this combined with our other life stressors that um, certain races face, such as discrimination in their workplace, discrimination outside of their workplace. Um, you know, they turn on the TV and there's not, you know, the prettiest images. So all of that type of stress combined with the excessive amount of exposure to COVID-19, that's going to result in a higher death rate in that population. And so Though that population is small, and you would think that the, 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 the majority population will, will have more contact with COVID-19, this slide kind of explains how that's not true. Um, and so I hope you guys are able to understand structural racism and, and what part it plays, okay? Um, this is a quick pop quiz. We're gonna skip it because we do not have an, a lot of time, but I hope you guys are able to remember some of the definitions that we went over. I'm also gonna run past that video. That video was really just a call to action for our youth. Um, it showed different youth engaging in combating racism. Um, but we, we are running out of time um, and I want to be respectful of your time. So instead of showing that video, we're just going to review some people who are um, some youth who are already combating racism. Um, so we'll start with Teens for Equality. And so this is a group of five young ladies, uh, Z Thomas, Jade Fuller, Naya Collins, Kennedy Green, uh, Michaela Smith, Emma Rose Smith. Um, these young ladies are from Nashville, but they do not limit themselves to just Nashville. They actually organized one of the largest peaceful protests in response in response to the death of George Floyd, um, which is you know, amazing that they could do that at their age. Uh, this other young lady, her name is Kenidra Woods. Uh, she pretty much wrote a book called Heart of Hope, and she uh, created her own organization called Cheetah. And her book and her organiz organization really focuses on the mental anguish that people of color face just by living and existing. Um, and so her organization provides a safe haven for um, uh, women of color and people of color to address those uh, mental health struggles and battles that they face. And her book speaks to her personal, st her personal struggle and her personal story. Um, And so, yes, so those are two really great um, individuals. I hope by hearing their stories, you guys are inspired to take action yourself. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to 
the youth bureau and I thank you guys. Thank you, Girls Inc. Wasn't that a really engaging workshop? We definitely learned so much. Now we're gonna hear from more of your high school peers followed by words from some of our community leaders. Happy International Day of the Girl from the United Nations Association of Westchester. My name is Reina and I'm so excited to have the opportunity to celebrate the amazing girls and young women of UNA who are breaking boundaries and making our communities and the world a better place. We have girls and young women who are fighting period poverty by bringing period products to girls in need, who are helping refugees find aid in their new homes with digital solutions, who are advocating for environmental justice and the rights of all species, and we're especially excited to be fighting for Westchester County to pass CEDAW, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Julianne will tell you more. In May, I made a pitch at the United Nations Week of Action advocating for CEDAW which is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. In 1979, CEDAW was adopted by the United Nations, but the United States is one of only six countries in the world that has still not ratified CEDAW. The other five countries are Iran, Somalia, Sudan, Palau, and Tonga. The UNA USA Westchester chapter can be the advisory board of key government offices on the implementation of CEDAW in our county. One of our priorities is to define areas where women's rights are not being sufficiently addressed, such as violence against women, access to resources, including shelters, healthcare, and daycare facilities, access to educational resources for females who lack internet support and educational spaces. Westchester County is a pioneer in pushing for women's rights and educating girls on the inequalities. We're the only county in New York that has adopted a CETA resolution. We're also the only county in New York that celebrates the International Day of the Girl. This is a powerful effort to champion equality and female empowerment. This year's IDG theme, Our Voices, Our Rights, Our Movements are exactly what we stand for. We can target aid to meet the defined needs through compiled data sets. We can further advance improvements of equal opportunities for women while promoting non-discrimination and availability of social benefits. We can encourage other municipalities to join our efforts and to advocate women's rights. We must speak out and make our voices heard. Powerful girls become powerful women who will raise powerful girls in the future. Greetings all, my name is Tuesday Paige McDonald, the proud executive director for the city of Pisca Youth Borough. And I wanna take this opportunity to acknowledge our amazing, beautiful girls and to remind you to continue to let your light shine. There is nothing that you cannot do. Building girls of courage, confidence, and character who will make the world a better place. And I wanna encourage all of the girls and young women listening to be confident in their voice and their opinions. Our communities, your communities, your families, your friends, your teachers, your peers need to hear from you. So please have the courage to speak up, speak out in order for our communities and your communities to grow in the best way possible. Our voices, our rights, and our movements. Find your passion through curious exploration. Discover what makes you excited and dive into it. Hard work, perseverance, and a positive attitude are key ingredients to your success. And remember, your best effort is more than enough. Dream big. Never limit yourself to only what you think is possible. Strive for more. Help your peers. Encourage one another to discover the power that lives inside each and every one of you. Wow, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling inspired. That was the perfect way to close out our program. I wanna thank all of you for joining us to celebrate the International Day of the Girl event here in Westchester County. This has been a wonderful event and I hope all of you are leaving here feeling more empowered. And remember that it's our world and we can make a difference in it with our voices, our rights and our movements. Thank you.